Okay, I am no longer muted. So hello. Hello. Let's do that right. Hello. And welcome to Science Sunday. <laughs> I am your host, Annie Wilson. The co-hosts are the white dog, Puck, and the little black dash hound, Tinkerbell. They bark. I apologize, but, you know, I will do my best to mute. So we were working on the Vera Rubin Galaxy. We're going to keep going back to that. And it is just, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot. So let me make sure I open up last week's file first. And we'll get at it. So go ahead and ask me any questions. We can continue chatting about cameras. Um, hello, the Kingsguard. And yeah, I, 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 I'm totally okay with that. And if my dogs ever move, you may see in along the edge of their dog cam, a whole bunch of cardboard boxes. That is because I am going to be moving. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have not had a big move in 10 years. That makes me feel <laughs> old. When I say it like that, it makes me feel old. All right, there you go, doggos. <laughs> Thank you, BDS guy. When is the move? That's a very good question, Astro-wise. Oh my, is that a good question. It depends which one of us you're talking about. Um, favorite human is going to go ahead first. If we can get our act together, we might just go out together. If we can't get our act together, I am following. Um... I go out together, I mean go out together and both of us stay, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, we don't have an apartment secured yet, uh, but he starts he starts work on the 16th and I have more of a flexible schedule, so there you go. There you go. Alright, so let me pull up the scene and last time we were is this full screen I think that's as full screen as it gets last time we were working on erasing stuff and I don't remember which we must have been working on the blue layer so I guess we're just gonna ke go ahead and, and get at it we're just gonna go ahead and get at it so the cool thing is that, I can't remember who put plenty of this out last week, is that I can erase and still have, um, I can erase on one layer and still have everything on the other layer. So we're going to set the opacity all the way up and we're going to zoom all the way in because that's all. Um, Kevlar asked, uh, deployment reassign, re reassignment related uh, from the last move. The last move was when um, we bought, or when we, I mean myself and the ex, bought the house. Because uh, he was active duty before that. So... Um, when you leave active duty, they kind of do this cool thing where they will pay for a move. So we had other people moving us. It's one of those things where I'm like, am I? Oh, I see what's happening. Let me open up the history. Apparently I was erasing on the wrong layer. Yeah, there we go. Um, but yeah, when you leave active duty, they pay for a move, which is actually pretty cool. It sucked because they weren't the, the they weren't the, uh, <laughs> they were not the most, um, What layer am I working on? Oh, I keep I keep seeing. I keep selecting the wrong layer. There we go. This is what we want. Um 
But, like, we were in the house and we didn't have our stuff for a while. And it was terrible. It was just terrible. Like, apparently we had an unsecured load and that took longer and... Like, I understand why people in the military will do a self-move because you know when you're getting your stuff that way. I'm still bothered how this doesn't line up, but I, I am done touching up on things like that. I really am. But yeah, yeah, there's totally a reason why a lot of people in the military just choose to do a self-move, even when they don't have to. Uh, because you can just end up being without your stuff for so long. It was... It wasn't fun. It was not fun. I don't remember a whole lot about that move other than I know I made myself scarce when the movers came when we left New York and I made myself scarce when the movers came when they arrived in Ohio. So, all right. Later, Larry. I hope you have a good day. Um, I'm looking forward to this move. I'm not looking forward to the packing. I think this is the most diligent I have ever been about packing, which is kind of good. But it's still one of those things where it's like, why? Previous moves have just been like, all right, grab as much as I can and shove it in a car. Aside from when the military moved us. And now I have a whole house and it's not like I can just shove everything in the car because I have a lot of stuff now. There we go. I'm still amused that I can just take out things that just don't look right. But I am looking forward to the move. I'm just... I, I'm not going to lie, I panic every time that I start packing. Like, I did not realize how much Lego I had. And I was just... I'm still a little disgusted with myself. But everybody that I've told that I have multiple boxes... <coughs> excuse me. That I have multiple boxes of Lego packed, they're like, cool! I'm like, how is this cool? This is terrifying. This is just terrifying. All right. Erase some of these. I think I'm getting towards the edge of the image where it won't matter as much because I'll probably crop a decent amount of this stuff out. But the goal is still to try to erase seams. And some of the stuff I found has been fun. And some of the stuff I found has just been like, WTF. Like literal WTF, why, why do I have this? I think I'm getting done. Yeah, I think I have like one set of that. Okay, yeah, that's way below where we're gonna. Quito says, <laughs> multiple boxes of Lego is completely normal, don't worry. I still, I'm still like, I don't know, I don't know. 
All right, this one's gonna be tough. This one I'm actually gonna have to turn the opacity down. I know, I hear you. It's like everybody's like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's all right that you've never done Lego, it's fine. This might be a, more of a thing for the clone stamping tool, but we'll see what we can do with the eraser. Actually, let's back that up. Um, the lines are from a star. That much I can tell you is that the lines are from a star. It's from a foreground, it's from a foreground star. So here's that big old foreground star. And it's just, it's just a diffraction. I was able to line it up okay. And by the time that everything's, you know, merged, it shouldn't matter that these lines aren't uh, too big. Packing for moving is not the time to judge life choices. Yes, I agree, because you can get real upset with yourself real fast. I found a whole bunch of webkins that I had bought ages ago before, like, before I was married. And they were like beanie babies. And I found a place to sell them online. And I was just like, here, I'm just going to tell you what I have. I'm going to box them all up and I'm going to send it off. And even though I was disgusted at my former self, like, why did you do this? Because there were a lot of them. I'm getting a little bit of money back from it. So it, part of me is like, it could be worse. Like, it was definitely not a good return on investment, but it's not... I was able to get stuff out of the house and get paid for it, so. Yeah. Yeah, they are one way to line up the image and it's just, I've, I've given up trying to totally adjust this image. And because the more I futz with it, the, the longer it's going to take me to complete. And at this point, I just want to be done. I just want to be done. Yeah, moving is both stressful and terrible and like I know we're going to move again. I know we're going to move again. We might move again within a year or so. So, because the goal, the hope was that we would be able to get a one bedroom apartment, which is not what I wanted. I wanted a whole separate bedroom to set up my studio and things like that, and just have a place for, you know, people to crash. And, um, that may just not happen. So essentially like oh, this line is just going to be terrible. I think that might be a job for the clone stamper tool. Yeah, it took my parents a lot longer to move out of their place than, than I was expecting, and I think than they were expecting. And I know they filled up multiple storage units. Because my mom just wasn't willing to part with some stuff. There was like water damaged furniture, and like, you can't keep this. Where are you going to put it? 
Oh, I'll find a place. Like, no, 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 no. Alright, I think I'm gonna turn this up a bit more. That's better. I'm eventually going to run out of overlap, which is bad. Yeah. The hardest thing has just been like, there are things that I want to keep images of. When I came back, um, when I came back from deployment, finally, because I came back different from the rest of my unit, my parents had, my parents got together with uh, one of my uncles and made this very nice welcome home banner. This banner is huge. It has been in a box for forever. I'm not ready to part with it because even though I don't want the banner, I want an image of the banner. Um, so that just got tossed aside and I think at some point it may just turn into a, okay, let's go here, take an image of it, and then um, take a picture of it, and then, you know, toss the banner. DPI says, uh, just unpack what you need or are looking for after the move, and every box that isn't unpacked after three years is your next garage sale. I keep finding like important papers mixed in with all these boxes. Do you have photos with your family with it? No, they hung it up on the garage. And I mean, that's not too bad. They hung it up on the garage and it's just been there. The story would be the important thing. Oh, the for the uh, banner? There, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, I just want a picture of it. That's it. <laughs> I don't want the whole banner. I just want a picture of it. All right, we need to make this bigger. Because it's just going to be one of those photos, I think. Oh, no! All right, now we're in. All right, I think we're going to have to... Um... I think that's going to be clone clone brush tool territory. I can probably do a little bit up here. And that gets rid of... Well, that's still there. Yes, it is a mosaic. It is indeed a mosaic. Oh no. Okay. Yeah, I think we're in clone brush tool territory. There is a bit of a cutout, and I, I, I am aware of that. So, I think later I can actually let me undo those couple steps turn down the opacity a bit I think later I can just kind of uh, clone brush tool this will just give it a softer edge right through here now it doesn't look so much like it was yeah that should be good Let's zoom out I mean it'll work we can definitely do a clone brush tool and just kind of stamp it. All right, so now we need to erase. Nope, not this image. We need this image. We actually need that stronger. Actually, I'll do something I haven't done yet. 
Um, save as, because I haven't saved this. So 0, 03, 0, 01, 2020. And we might work a bit longer on this one today. Oh, there were bits. Okay. And make it rain. Watch, I'm going to move boxes later and there's just going to be Cheerios in boxes. So wait for it to save. Mm. You never heard my answer about the Lego. Let me scroll back up. I'm, I'm just, I'm a little, I, d I don't, I don't know how I feel about the Lego. I don't know how I feel about the, the, the boxes and boxes of Lego. I found more Lego while I was cleaning. Yes, this is a Hubble Space Telescope image. They come down as black, literally black and white photos, grayscale. And each of these photos have been taken with a filter. Actually, let's undo that and make our thing back down to 10 centimeters, or not 10 centimeters, 10 pixels. Turn up our opaque opacity. And then just go through and get rid of these black bits and then we'll go through and touch everything else up. Um, Vera Rubin is so big that it had to be taken as uh, a mosaic, meaning that there were literally at least a total of 12 images taken to capture the entire thing. And the professional image, I don't know how long it took the professionals to do the uh, press release image, but I, I've spent a while working on this. In fact, I'm a little worried that it's not going to be done before the move. Is there a need for a Lego hour if there's a future hangout-a-thon? I would totally be down for a Lego hour. Pamela would totally be down for a Lego hour. Um, I packed up my Lunar Lander. Like, the Lunar Lander still isn't done. I, I packed that up because... Kind of the last thing I want to do is... Break out the Lego and pack when I'm trying to clean. Oh yeah, Vera Rubin Galaxy, of course, not Vera Rubin, yeah. And um, I have the ISS set that I haven't started. That's packed. Um, I had to mostly disassemble the uh, Ori that Flame Lord and I did on stream, just because it was so odd. It was very oddly shaped. And what else? I have a lot of Lego. <laughs> I have a lot of Lego. That's, that's fine. I'm just amused because every time I, I go, oh my God, I have a lot of Lego. Favorite humans like, I know. I know. As a guy that's been living here, I know. Alright, let's see if we can... Nope, that's not gonna work. We have to be careful. Actually, I don't think I want to delete that, but it's really close to the edge. I just lost the eraser. There it is. Um, did 
I ever do anything about the amount of noise in this image, in this layer? I feel like I didn't. All right, I'm gonna go way back because... <laughs> no, you aren't helping. Because I feel like this, I feel like we did something to the other one. That kind of reduced the amount of noise. Are you done? She's like, no. So let's do that to this. I just lost all my things because the dog. Ooh, that's going to be really cool, Rust Matt. All right, so we're going to do image. I think it was filter. Kind of keep dragging to the upper corner. There we go. I don't think it was this. I think I used... <sighs> Despeckle? No. Keep Hal turned off. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good idea, Refsmat, to just put it in a... Uh... thing. Dust and scratches makes it look better already. I don't know why dust and scratches does that try to find all right I think that's what we needed was dust and, dust and scratches that already looks better before I forget let me do that to the other one so filter dust and scratches boom I knew it was something simple I knew it was something simple okay now we should be able to go in it's not perfect, but it has more of a comparable noise level around it. So let me get my teeny tiny, we'll actually go down to five or something. Because some of this is really sensitive. Oops, I am not on the right image. There we go. Hey JC, we are working on Hubble Space Telescope images. Um, it is, let me zoom out for you real quick. This is one big mosaic. This is four images and right now I am trying to make them not look like they're four images, which is pretty tricky. Um, so right now I have the eraser tool and I'm going along the seams and I'm getting rid of obvious things. So, like, these black lines are, are painfully obvious. So, yeah. Hello, I am Annie. I have two dogs. I can't, I don't remember, I can't tell if Tinker's on camera. Yeah, one of the dogs is on camera. Uh, that is Tinker Bell. Is she sitting? She is. Good job, Tinker. And make it rain! I'm trying to teach the dog that if she sits quietly, she'll get 
bits, but I don't always see that she's sitting. And uh, previously I had the dog cam lined up perfectly between me and the dog, so it looked like she was just staring into the, into the camera when she, really she's staring at me. And my dogs have now been um, conditioned to when I have, to when I'm sitting at the computer and I'm talking and the lights are on, they think that it's time to, uh, they think that it's time to get treats. Which is hilarious to me on so many levels. We'll just erase that star, because we can. <laughs> Actually, I should probably leave that star alone. That star didn't do anything to us. I am erasing the bottom one, though. So yeah, I am working on the very tedious, very, very tedious stuff of um, just making these look like one image. And I forget how long I've been working on this image now. It's been multiple streams. Multiple streams. As a silly dog that star called my mom fat. Yeah, even more reason for me to erase it. Or right, that one can go too. That one was mean to me. I think this is everyone's favorite part is when I'm just erasing and the entire stars just disappear. Entire stars just disappear. But um, we also pretty much just talk about whatever, and like I'm I'm getting ready to move. That's why you see cardboard boxes off to the side. And I was showing off my cameras before the stream when I was warming up. I have two Argus C3s. They're really popular in America because I, I don't know where in the world you are. They were really popular in America and one was owned by my grandfather. Of the two I have, one was owned by my grandfather. He's still looking for it. He has dementia. Um, I've just, at this point, now I just tell him it's in the shop. I don't, I don't, I don't have the heart to tell him that I have it. I don't know if he would be okay or if he would remember that he gave it to me. So, um... I know, Tinkerbell. Um, can you show how to download the FITS files? I can't seem to be able to use the data archive site. Uh, which data archive site are you using, ARC? So you can extend a drawing and a lemma on the south, south wall of our house. That sounds fun. Um, it's, it's life, JC. It's... He, um, he doesn't recognize, he can't, when he sees me, he can't put my name, he can't put my name in the relationship of us together, but he knows that, uh, we talk about his military service. He served in Panama for a brief period of time. Um, I guess this was at a time when you could go from... E... what did he enlist as? I think he enlisted as an E1. He went to, from an E1 to an E6 within four or five years. Um, Mast... yes, Mast is right. Um, and he knows to talk to me about... once I finish this line, we can pull that up. Um, he knows to talk to me about his military service. That was probably too much. We'll, 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 we'll fix that later. Because I have a feeling it's going to be multiple sessions of just working on this layer. 
Uh, he knows to talk to me about his military service, and he knows to talk to me about beer, and he knows to talk to me about, um... HLA and Mast are, you can both get stuff from there, but they're a little different. Um, HLA is a little bit more, it's just focused on Hubble. So if you just want Hubble, go with HLA. Oh, and uh, he knows to talk to me about cameras and photos, and he knows I drink beer. And yes, I bring non-alcoholic beer to my grandfather's house so we can drink beer together. He wasn't a big beer drinker before. Um... But the things that the things that have always been like him have pretty much stayed. Like he really likes ice cream. Um, he really likes sweets. Uh, my uncle doesn't like it too much. So ice cream has to be hidden from him. Chocolate milk has to be hidden from him. Um, so that's why like when I come over with uh, non-alcoholic beer because yes that's a thing and i found a stout that i really like i i just bring a can at a time uh because otherwise he probably would drink it all but he's pretty far he's to the point where he has home health care um he has several of his he has two of his kids living with him two of his adult children living with him and um his, uh, he's got like three other adults living with him and home health care comes by. I know I said I'd finish that line, but I want to get this one too. Uh, home health care comes by several times a week. He's in hospice, but we just, we don't know how long he has. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's taken a while, uh, being a caretaker is not a lot of fun because he doesn't, like he thinks people steal from him. He doesn't think he's at home. It's challenging. And uh, I, I don't visit as much as I used to for a couple of reasons. But when I was visiting every week, it, Everybody that was involved seemed to enjoy it, so. I got some really cool stories. I got to do some research. Um, since, you know, another one of his kids has moved in. He, they've found photos, they've found news articles, because my grandfather kept talking about this plane crash. And I couldn't, there's, people archive old plane crashes and stuff online. And I could find his name as being on the crew because he worked as a, uh, he worked as a radio operator. Like he knew Morse code at one point. And he would talk about this crash and how he crashed in a cotton field. But I had always thought, and he had said that he had crashed in a cotton field in Texas. It was not Texas. It wasn't even in the US. Um, it wasn't even in the U.S., but he did crash in a cotton field. I'm gonna have to use, maybe, maybe, no, this one, yeah, this one works out really well. Uh, Astro says, have you taken a photo with him, with his camera? Um, I can't take his camera over because reasons, but I think, because I am going to go see him, like, couple more times before I move. <coughs> Tinkerbell, why are you barking? I am going to go see him a couple more times before I move, and I will probably take the other Argus, the one that has film in it, that's not his, <coughs> um, over, because he recognizes that it's not his camera, so he, he doesn't get upset. He will probably still look for his camera, um, and that will probably drive my uncle nuts, but... Um, yeah, because he, he, he will look for his camera. He's like, I have another camera. I have one just like that. Where is it? And he will just, yeah. So I may, I may not. Um, I don't know, but I haven't seen him in a couple weeks. I was going to go last week, 
and it just didn't happen because moving stuff. So GC says, well, that's very cool. I know it's not a fun process to watch someone deteriorate, but he has some people to care for him and love him late in life that he won't pass away alone is the way I hope to go out. Yeah, he's not, he's not going to be alone. Um, he has rough nights from what I've heard. Um, I'm just glad there's other adults in the house to help out my uncle because like my uncle couldn't go out. He was the sole care caretaker and because he was the black sheep, uh, a lot of us didn't know how bad it was. And you know, grandpa has good days and bad days and he has good weeks and bad weeks. And there, there have been times when I've gone over and he's still in bed at like one in the afternoon. And there's been times when I've gone over and he's not really talking. And there will be times that I go over and he's really talkative and he seems really lucid. So it's, it's challenging. The funniest thing he does right now is mistake a dog for a cat and a cat for a dog. He doesn't like cats. But right now there's like two dogs and a cat living with him too. Hey Keeper. Will I do Cosmo Quest stuff after I move? Yes, that's actually one of the reasons why I'm moving is so I can do uh, more um, Cosmo Quest stuff. It'll probably be more coding, but it will be easier to do Cosmo Quest stuff with Pamela and I in the same city. Hello, Keeper. How was Handbells? Um, let's see, what else about my grandpa? So yeah, he was in an accident uh, with this plane. We found, there was a whole news article about it because he crash landed in, I think it was El Salvador? In some farmer's field and the farmer had set up this runway for his own, you know, spray paint. Spray... Spray plane. Um, and that's, that's just where they landed and they had to stay there until parts could be brought out and things. And, uh, somebody else also had a camera and they took photos of, or they may have been my grandfather taking the photos, but I haven't found copies, but, uh, somebody else took photos of them just... playing instruments for whatever reason they had instruments with them and just playing instruments and all the locals like came out from the village and stuff to go see them it, it was wild there was a whole article about it um there was a whole article about it he keeps telling a story about how they flew some uh american girls from point a to point b and they weren't supposed to and like i, ca I can see that happening um, one of his stories that he likes to tell a lot is he had brought whiskey home for his father and when you pack a military duffel bag and you're sliding things in at the last minute, you slide them in down the side. If the duffel bag was handled gently, it would have been okay. The duffel bag was not handled gently and all all bottles of the whiskey, the number has ranged from like three to seven. All the bottles of the whiskey that he had brought home for his father just broke because the crew chief just tossed the duffel bag out onto the tarmac. And for whatever reason, that memory really sticks with grandpa. And so I, I told him I would be mad too. Oh, well, that's looking better already. You can barely tell. Like, I know we can tell, but you can barely tell. Um, so yeah, he was bummed about that. Um, so that's the story he likes to tell a lot. He, I think he tells it every time I'm over there. If he's feeling up to it. He doesn't always feel up to it. Um, I can't remember what other stories, because he tells that one a lot. Um, he doesn't really remember 
he remembers being all over South America. And he remembers that like he was in all these places, but he doesn't always like recall them when you ask. So it's one of those things where um, like at this point, like I, I, at points I had started to tell the story. I'm like, you had once told me about, especially if I want more information, you had once told me about how your, um, how your plane crashed. And yeah, I think his long-term memory is better than short, but he'll, he'll get things confused. Um, one time he said that the plane that he crashed in, like for, for starters, he had told me it was Texas. It wasn't until we had found external documentation that I knew it was El Salvador. Um, that's also a story that he hadn't told a lot of other people. Like he would tell me repeatedly and, um, but he didn't necessarily tell like, um, he didn't necessarily tell his kids. And at some point he said that he had been to Antarctica, but what had really happened is that he had gone so far south on South America and landed that, I mean, it's not Antarctica. He may have been in Antarctica and we just don't know, but he went so far south down on South America that he remembers when they landed or when he did something with the plane, um, like they landed on an island and essentially there wasn't a lot of land and he had to stand in water. So, um, I don't, I don't know. Uh, shh. Um, I don't know. Uh, he also... He also, no, I don't think he saw penguins. He just talks about standing in the water. And I have to be careful when I ask him specific questions because the part of that, the part of the brain where that memory is stored might be like, think of like a corrupted hard drive. You can get parts of files out. You can see like what files may have been there, but you can't necessarily retrieve the intact file oh they are being good and make it rain um like he has a he has like a sweater vest that someone created for him he keeps saying it was his mother i think it was actually his wife but it might have been his mom i don't know i've showed him pictures of his late wife like I knew who it was in the photo. She died over 20 years ago, for starters. Like, I was fairly certain this was who it was in the photo, because there weren't a whole lot of photos of her. She didn't like having her photo taken. And, um, like, he just, I would ask, who's this? And he wouldn't be able to tell me. Um, but if you showed him pictures of like his kids or some of his grandkids, you'd be like, okay, yeah, that is, you know, this kid, that is this kid's husband or wife or whatever. So it's kind of, it's kind of fascinating. I've done a lot of reading just so I can know how to talk to him. But it's fascinating and frustrating all at the same time. It really is. All right, so we're going to put this down to 50% opacity. So Ark, do you still need, uh, do you still need help with navigating HLA and downloading data? Because after I touch up this line, we can probably do that. Because I, I know it's been a while. Yep, okay. So let me touch up this line real quick.
Yeah, he likes music. He likes um he likes big band. One of his um I think the most disturbing thing has been the uh, auditory hallucinations. Oh, thank you for the gift sub! Hey, <laughs> make it rain! Like, one of the most disturbing things has been the uh, auditory hallucinations, which I think have gotten better uh, since there's more adults with him now and he gets more stimulation. Because uh, he would sit for hours just in a room by himself staring at the TV. Or not even staring at the TV, just staring at the wall. So, eh, I mean, it's not perfect, but the line's better. All right. The line is a lot better. I can probably fiddle with brightness or something later to make it really match. All right, so I'm gonna save this. And, um, yes, you are one of us now. One of us, one of us. Let it save. This is a huge file. Um, but he likes big band music. Um, he really liked fishing. He's not... He's not mobile enough. Like, my uncle really doesn't like it when, when they have to get him out of the house because Grandpa refuses to sit in a wheelchair because it makes him look old. This man is over 90. And he's a fall risk. Uh, but he used to really like fishing. But he's just, yeah. Okay, so I was gonna open the old ones. It's like, Grandpa, you, you are old. Oh my, we have been working on this for over a month. All right, so here's what we started with way back in the in the in January that's what we started with in January let me zoom this out and turn all the layers back on that's what we have now um, there's still a line right there but that's fine but yeah that's what we started with in January this is what we have now and let me open up last week's Yeah, it is much better. There's been a lot of fiddling and adjusting and erasing. And at this point, like, I really just want to colorize it. I just want to be like, all right, let's colorize it. No, what happened? How did I do that? All right. So, and this was what we started with today. Your line killing skills are off the charts. Oh, thank you. So this is what uh, we had started with today. And this is what we have now. All right, later Kevlar. I wonder what beer Kevlar is gonna drink today. So there's still that issue. I, I'm not even worried about it. But yeah, that is that. So let me switch scenes for a second because it's gonna take me a little bit to get masked up. So let me make sure that this is saved. And it's going to take forever to save. And yeah, Veronica, I'm excited. I'm excited about this progress. I'm worried it's not going to be finished before I move. But I think at this point, that's just a fact of life. It's still saving. I think at this point it's just a fact of life that it's just not going to be done before the move. And I'm not sure how much time I'm going to take off around the move. Um, like I don't know if I'm going to be streaming next weekend or not. Like I think I can be. I think I can stream next weekend. Um, but I think after next weekend, I might just have to take off until April. Because, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, we can uh, get into... Yeah, hopefully we can get into this apartment pretty quick. 
because I'm I I am flat out not moving until we we have an apartment that I can move the dogs into. All right, so let's look at HLA, and then let's let me pull up Mast, and then let me make sure that everything's showing up correctly in OBS. Because guess what? It's not. There we go. All right. So this is, this is mast. And then this is HLA. HLA is just Hubble images. Um, <laughs> I like that, JC. According to scientists, space will be around for a little while longer, so take as much time as you need. Yeah. Um, so this is the HLA. This is just Hubble images and you literally just enter the site here. This may or may not have uh, the latest stuff, and M101 is a pretty popular galaxy. So we're gonna do search. You can also just do search for random. You can type in like, uh, I think Eskimo Nebula. We really need to come up with a better name for that. So like here's the Eskimo Nebula data and this just shows you, hold on, this just shows you a lot of stuff, which if you don't know what you're looking at, this doesn't make sense. So if you click the images tab, you can see something that makes a little bit more sense. And a thing to watch out for is the file names. Um, because the file, or not necessarily the file names, but like right here, this will tell you a lot of information. So uh, F550Y is the filter. This is probably the proposal number, the 06119. The HST just means it's Hubble Space Telescope. Um, uh, wide, WF is probably wide field. PC, I forget what PC stands for. Um, but it's probably different cameras. So, I don't know what this WFall fix is all about. NGC, okay. So let's do NGC 2392. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember. I used to know all the things. So this is the same image. Um, we're going to use the official name NGC 2392. It's a well-known image. People have called it the Eskimo Nebula because it does look like, let me pull up this really bad auto. Can we just interactive display? Oh, it didn't pull it up because that's not how this works. Um, because it looks like, this one's actually a better one over here. It looks like a person with the hood up, like a fur lined hood up, and for most North Americans, they automatically think to, you know, Eskimos, where yes, they wear fur because fur is warm, but saying that word is kind of like, in certain parts, is kind of like saying the N word. So, first peoples, native peoples, Aboriginal, I don't even know if Aboriginal is okay. Indigenous First Peoples, um, Indigenous, like those are both okay. So yeah, um, okay, so you were trying to find what I'm trying to find. So if you put UGC 2885 search, no results in the Hubble Legacy Archive. That's because the image is too new. So let's go over to MAST and do UGC 2885 and we click search up here yeah um yeah keeper it is it's it's challenging and like puck is um puck is an american eskimo that is literally the dog breed name is american eskimo and it's weird because that breed was never Arctic, was never an Arctic breed. So there is that. 
everything I've ever read is like, oh yeah, they were bred to be in circuses to do tricks. He is really trainable. Anyways, so UGC 20, 2885 is in Mast because it is newer. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go to album view and we want, we don't want all this other stuff. We want HST. So we click HST. Um, Keeper of Maps says the TD, the TLD or version, T too long didn't read version is that he seemed to be okay with it. Apparently it's more of an issue in Alaska. Apparently it's more of an issue in Alaska. So I like, I can't speak for all North America as a continent. I can just speak for what I've heard about Alaska. So here is all the bits and pieces to UGC 2885. You just have to pull it up in MAST because the data is really new. This was released earlier this year. And um, you just want to make sure you select HST. All these acronyms are breaking my name. UGC, I forget what UGC stands for. Um, it's probably a catalog name. And HST just stands for Hubble Space Telescope. Uh, you get used to it after a while. You really do. Um, see, like, Spitzer, they're like, there's no... Alright, let's do a random search, and it picked M71. Yeah, there are so many acronyms. So many acronyms. So, if you wanted to narrow this down by mission, like, we only want to sp see the swift images of mast or of uh, M71, and M stands for Messier, which is, again, another catalog. Uh, you would just cl uh, click Swift, and it pulls up the Swift data. It doesn't look like it's a whole lot to look at. I don't do a whole lot with Swift data. Um, Spitzer looks like it has some data that it doesn't want to preview. I don't know what PS1 is. but it looks like it might be, um, it might just be the same kind of thing, uh, mosaics. HLA is Hubble Legacy Archive. That's where a lot of the older images are just stored. And, um, HS, yeah, as I said, HST is Hubble Space Telescope. And not all, not all data is here. There's other places to get data. So yeah, satellite names are pretty bad. Oh, and you can even look by observation title. So if you wanted to make sure they were all from the same observation in MAST, you just click that. And then the one I clicked is blue stragglers, a key stellar population to probe inter internal cluster dynamics. Notice how these aren't really pretty images. It's still data and it's still very valuable data. Um, I don't know, can I do an advanced search for what I want? Can I do it by, I can do it by proposal. Let's see if I can do it by principal investigator. All right, so principal investigator, now I have to think of his name. Mihos. That can't be right. Hold on, I'm making sure I spelled his name right. I did not spell his name right. Ha 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 Results found 52. So um, I don't know if I can narrow it down. I know they've done Mihos and HST. No, I know you've done HST stuff with Mihos. Um, I know Mihos kind of. Let's try mission. Still found. Anyways, 52 results. I'm going to click search. 
and oh they put everything in HLA and M101 here we go I think this is data I had tried to work with previously but it's not pretty data but they do amazing they've done amazing science with this data um, they don't think I can pick up Feldmeyer this way let's see where is I don't think Feldmeyer's ever had a nope and I don't think Durrell yeah Durrell hasn't been principal investigator so principal investigator PI just means that they are like the head of the project um, yes the M and M101 is also for Messier and oh thank you for following i missed it all right and <laughs> rain. um and I, I know when you submit a proposal you submit it under pi or principal investigator name so while uh dr durrell and dr feldmeyer have done work on hubble Everything's been submitted under Mihos's name, which is why I'm able to search, find the data that they're working with, and because um, I've I've seen Dr. Feldmeyer work on I've probably seen Dr. Feldmeyer working on this data, and yeah, again, not a lot to look at. It's not very pretty. <laughs> it really isn't. Uh, there's only. Let's see detection 606 yeah it's just detection 606 so with a filter and without a filter that's it and normally I try to work with like three filters so but yeah that's that's how you find that's how you find some of this info unless it's on another page still 606 see what was the oh it's not even giving me the uh, the thing but um, yeah they all these images are taken they run them through some fancy software and that's that so the first set is the name what would be the NE in plume so the NE probably means Northeast and the plume is just part of um, M101. So they are looking at do everything. So there, here's M101 over here while it thinks. And they are looking, oh my. And then let's see, we want HLA data. And see if I can figure it out target name show 166 more so ne plume they might not have it in here because that's the target name is the ne plume the Northeast plume Yeah, they don't make this easy. <laughs> they don't make this easy because I'm like, oh, I'll just narrow it down to his stuff. No, no, apparently I can't do that. All right, let's collapse that. Target classification. Show fewer. Um, I don't think it's even gonna let me do observation. I'm trying to narrow it down so I can show you exactly what it is. Crap, what did I, I said it was like six something. Let me edit the filters. Oh, wow. Well then, well then that doesn't help. Um, Hi, surrogacy. Yeah, so basically the name and its location, I, pr 
probably... I can get the... Okay, here's the observation ID. 13701. So let's see if I can get that that way. So we'll minimize that. Oh, here's... Now they show the PI. So we're looking for Mihos. I don't know why it's not showing Mihos. That's weird. Unless I need to zoom out. I might need, I think I needed to zoom out. Because I think... Will it show me what I selected? No, no, it will not. But I think this is it. It's just not showing it to me. You know, it's 13 something. None of these things are in order the way they should be. Anyway. I'm fairly certain, actually, let, let's go back to here. Yeah, okay, so this is it. Um, let's go to album view, table display, selected. All right, it's not happy, but I think, so this is M101. And this is the selected data. So it's it's way out there. And I don't know if I can change how everything is viewed. I cannot. But yeah, that's, they took data all the way out here. All the way out here. Um, they do a lot of work on, they've done a lot of work with stars that don't, have galaxies because not all stars are in galaxies uh, when galaxies collide sometimes stars are just kind of left by themselves and it's just a thing that happens so anything else other than tinker is sitting very nicely and make it rain tinker is sitting very very nicely so i hope that help helped navigate uh, mast a little better. <laughs> All right, good. I'm glad that helped helped you uh, navigate mast because I I get it. It's it's scary and we haven't done it in a while. All of these uh, streams where I'm covering all this bit bits like these are all archived on YouTube. Um, so. If you want to go back, you can go back and watch like all my progress because I think I've been doing this over a year now, working with Hubble image, mostly Hubble images. <laughs> Community has tried to get me to branch out and work with other images, but I always come back to Hubble because I feel safe with Hubble. Um, the truth, like there's just, there's a lot to all these images and there's a lot. There's a lot. I, I, I eventually, I think I do want to try stacking multiple instruments again, but I th think that's going to take a lot of research outside of, that's what it was. We tried Spitzer. Um, I think it's going to take, to stack multiple instruments together, I think that's going to take a lot of research outside of streaming because it, I'm fairly certain watching media research is just going to be boring. So, yeah, for the Butterfly Nebula. I mean, maybe after the move I'll try it again. <laughs> but yeah, everything everything's archived on YouTube. Um, Dave says, never boring. Hi, Dave. Uh, I think I will stream Doggies Need Treats. Yes, they do. I think I will stream next week. Um, 
simply because I shouldn't be too deep in in um, packing, but I guess we'll see. I really, I don't know yet. Um, I don't know yet. I don't know what's happening. But I think next weekend we still plan on being here. So there is that. Um, I don't think I have any other announcements. There is no launch today. There's supposed to be a launch tomorrow. And I don't think it's going to be a launch tomorrow. I just don't. I, I get to, Dave and I get to figure out what we're going to write about for uh, Rocket Roundup this week. And Astrowise says, too bad we can't have a packing party and help me move. Oh, thank you. It's, it's just a lot. It's just a lot. It's a lot. And I think it's a lot of stuff that I just have to sit and sort through myself. So it's the fault of the site, not the launch provider. Well, they're launching from Alaska. Alaska. And it's not even wrapped up in, the rocket's not even wrapped up in blankets, so. But that's because it has liquid fuel this time. Oh, well, thanks. Uh, we stream most Sundays through Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern. Right now, that's 1,800 hours UTC. Um, and by we start at 1 p.m., we start at 1 p.m. Uh, you might completely miss daily space if you pop in like 20 minutes late. It, it's happened. Um, Mondays is hosted by Susie, our producer. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Wow, we did work that out well. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday is hosted by uh, Dr. Pamela Gay or Star Strider. She is the astronomer. And Wednesdays, I host uh, Rocket Roundup, and Sundays is this. So Sundays isn't news, it's me trying to make space pictures pretty. Everything else during the week is uh, space news. And we also stream randomly for like rocket launches, and there might be ninja streams for coding, because we're working on the website. And uh, yeah, so the best way to keep updated is to give us a follow and join our Discord. We're, we're, pretty, we're pretty chill in the Discord. Some easy rules to agree to when you join the Discord. Essentially, nothing that's safe for work, no hate. Um, I've forgotten all the rules and I just looked at them. It's essentially be a good person. Don't be a jerk. And everybody wants data from me. That's... That's a lot. So I'm just going to look at the rules real quick. Uh, yeah, be kind. It's not tolerated. Be respectful. No safe uh, for work content. That means no nudity, no mature language, no mention of illegal activity. If you're not sure something is OK, uh, private message a mod. And keep it simply science. There's no conspiracy theories, no pseudoscience. And all you have to do is follow the instructions. What about them space toilets? Uh, there's three space toilets in orbit right now. And so far this year, we've burned up one space toilet in orbit. I don't remember how many total we've burned up. It's over 140. This is, this is real stuff. This is real stuff. Uh, I was working on doors and windows and tables for my niece a while ago, but I, I haven't done any of that. So, all right. So I think that's all the things. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I can get real specific about space toilets. Real specific. Um, oh, it's 142? I think it's, it's at least 142. I, I had at one point sat down and started a spreadsheet that broke down all of them uh, because there have been modules before the Soyuz. And there have also been, um, there have also been the Chinese uh, space flight. Uh, there's been Chinese space stations. That's another two additional toilets that's burned up in the atmosphere. And there's also been um, the Chinese space flight program, and I forget how many they've had. So yeah, it's at least 142. At least. Yeah, Chang'e Chang 2 and Chang'e 1, I think. 
I don't know. Tiangong. Tiangong 1 and Tiangong 2. I'll have to work on my pronunciation. So, 3 is not up yet. Um, 3 is still, they're still working on 3. I'm fairly certain 3 is not up yet. I'm gonna have to look at this later. But yeah, yeah, space toilets, it's a thing. It's totally a thing. Uh, so, okay, I, that's all the things. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, this has been, next time you're on, you're gonna, gonna need to know more about the space toilets. I should eventually write a space toilet episode. I talk about them a lot though. I talk about them a lot. Oh, the Lunar Mission Craft, that's right. Like, I knew something, something. Ching Yi, yeah, that's right. That is the Lunar Mission Craft. Anyways, um, I'm gonna wrap everything up. So thank you everybody for joining us. This has been a production of PSI. That's Planetary Science Institute, working in collaboration with Youngstown State University here in Youngstown. Oh, wow, it's sunny outside, Ohio. And um, we are brought to you by you. So thank you for all of your support. Um, can't afford to donate bits patreon subscribe we get that we get that we do follows are free follows are free and they help just as much tell your friends families and enemies about us inflict us on your enemies it might be the nicest thing you do for them uh what else am i forgetting puck i think that's all the things i have to say <laughs> Because we already talked about YouTube. We have a podcast. I've already talked about Daily Space. So yeah. Um, thank you, everybody. I will see you soon. So wherever you are in the world, keep being awesome and have a wonderful insert time of day here. Bye.